Hello everybody and welcome to Be Promoted. My name is Rob. Today we're going to be doing some artwork for an upcoming job we have. It is a simple one color job. It's a white print on multiple color t-shirts. And the artwork is pretty much just wording. So they have given us a sample of what they want. And we have a little bit of freedom to change it however we want. We're going to design it in Corel Draw 2018. And I'm also going to show you some tips and tricks along the way for figuring out fonts and things like that. So come on over and I'll share my screen and we'll go through it together. All right, we're back on the opening screen for Corel here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new document. So we come up here to the upper left-hand corner to create new document. Now I have my film positive document already in place here. And what it is is basically it is a 13 by 19 document because that's the size of my film. I use the Ryanet waterproof film. It's 13 by 19. It's in CMYK mode because if I want to separate it into full color, I need it in CMYK. I usually don't. It's usually just spot color, but CMYK works for both spot color and for regular color. And then we'll hit OK. It's going to open up a new document here. And you can see it's 13 by 19 as we go across. Uh, just for reference, we are going to bring in the artwork we want to do, which is Control-I for import. And it, wherever the folder is you have it, I happen to have it in mind on my desktop. And it's called Sweethearts right here. We're going to import it, and we're just going to put it over here off to the side. We don't need to really see all of it, so we're going to kind of crop it down here using the cropping tool up over here. So drag where you want and double-click in the middle, and it creates a crop. Put it back on the picker tool, and now we can move it around however we want. We pretty much have free reign to do whatever we want as far as this design goes. The only stipulation is that she wanted to change to, she wants it to say my class instead of my class is full of sweethearts, she wants it to say our school is full of sweethearts. So we'll have to change this part to our school. So for reference we'll just put a little thing up here, this is our school, and that way we know that she wants that instead. So what we're going to do first is it's a couple different things. We have a couple different fonts here we're looking at. Well, three total. We have this font right here, which is kind of a funky handwritten font. We have this, which actually looks like a aerial rounded font. We have this, which is kind of a halfway cursive font, and then the hearts is the same as the My Class. And then there's a few little clip art hearts here and there, which we'll find some somewhere. So first thing we want to do is we want to type out the wording that we're going to need in other places. So we know like right here this is my class and then another one is going to be is full of <laughs> why didn't you guys tell me? See? It's already wrong. This needs to be changed to our school. Is full of and then we'll change it over here to sweet and then hearts. Now the reason we did this all in one, we could have we could have easily done them together, but it's just as easy to do them separately like that real quick. That way we can play around with each one because we know like this one and this one right here both have the same font. So what we're going to do now is we are going to go into Google and we're going to type in font identification. When you bring that up, there's going to be a few things that come up. There's a bunch of different little things. These programs right here are very great because they allow you to bring in an image and it will pull the words out of the image and tell you what font it is. The problem with the Font Squirrel one is the fact that it doesn't exactly like artsy fonts that kind of overlap each other, kind of like our design is. But we'll give it a try anyway. So we bring up the Font Squirrel and we upload our image to right here. Now on my desktop I have it saved as Sweethearts right here. So we will bring that in and we'll open it. And there is the image. Right now it has gone through and has found all the different parts that it has. All the different individual letters and it's going to maturate it. Now what it's doing is analyzing all the fonts and bringing up a list of possible fonts. So here are the different fonts that it has found. Okay? Not in any particular order. Like here is the S off of the 
things. Here's the H. Here's the E. Here's the A. And what we're doing is we're telling it what letter they are. When it comes to this one, we don't need this one. We don't need this one. We don't need this. These we don't need because we're going to use Helvetica rounded or Arial rounded. That's a small m. That one we don't need. That's a small y. And then we have capital C, capital L, capital A, capital S, capital S. And then we have a random W that was from somewhere, off from the suite. Again, we don't need the hearts. We know what those are. We don't need this. That was that labeling at the bottom of it. We don't need any of these. We can also get rid of these dots. And we can get rid of the box. And all of these. So this should figure out what the sweetheart is. And it should figure out what the class is. So now we'll match it again. And here we go. None of these really look that close to what we're looking for. So option number two, which is actually my favorite option, there is a website called dafont.com. It's a free registration, and basically it's a font bank. Okay, most of these are all free fonts. Okay, you can kind of pick which ones you want, what you like. They have a forum right here, which is for font identification, and you can put in your request of what you want. See here, right here, is the font identification. All these people have posted different things that they have trouble not knowing what the font is. If you're good at fonts, you can figure out what it is. If there's a reply, it turns out green or yellow. Green means it's definitely found. Yellow means eh, it could be it. It most likely is. So right here, right here. I need the Mancha Negra font. Thank you. So if you click on it, it brings up the thing, and then it brings up suggested fonts that somebody has suggested. Somebody says it's Euritress Library. Click on that font. Eh, not really. That guy's a little bit off. So we'll try the camel leopard. That's a little closer. So, see how it works. And it basically becomes a form where people try to add different things. I, unfortunately, placed my font on here a while ago, before I started this video, and it has not been identified yet. So, that is option number two that is now shot in the wind. So we'll go back to the other font identifiers. What the font is another good one. We will upload our image here, which is right there. And it's asking me what I want to find out of. So we'll try the suite right here. So now we're getting closer. You look at the different suites. None of them seem to be exact. But for what we're doing for this, we have the freedom to kind of do whatever we want. So as long as it's close, they're not going to care. So I think we will take this one right here. It is a nice bold font, but they want $19 for it. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find it free. So what we are going to do is we're going to type in Spumante Basic into Google, followed by the words free font. There we go, Spumante Basic Bold Free Font. See if it's free there. Font is, my font has definitely got this one locked in, don't they? 
So here randomly is this Hissium script. So we're going to see what that looks like and see if it's even close. And it is almost the same. We can type in sweet to see how it looks. And it's pretty close to what we need. It's more of a script, so I don't know. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Defont. Or another one I like is 1001 Free Fonts. And we're going to go into the script fonts. It's a very cool search engine because you can type in what you want. and it'll bring up the fonts. That one's pretty close. They really use the Google, uh, for lack of a better term, invasion to see what you want because I find it very weird that their suggested fonts are mostly fonts like we're looking at. But, you know, maybe it's just my own paranoia. I don't know, but we'll go here, we'll go up under script fonts And we'll scroll through a few pages and see what we can find. We're looking for something that's kind of not connected, but is. And we'll find something close. Beyond the Mountains I have, it's a pretty cool font. So actually, now that I'm looking at that in one of the script ones is Beyond the Mountains, I believe that's close to what I want. So we highlight the word sweet, and we go under our fonts, and it will preload all of our fonts that are on the computer, and it'll tell us where we go. And it was Beyond the Mountains, so we will go up to Beyond the Mountains here. And we'll see how it looks. That is pretty darn close to what we have. So, I say we go with it. So there's our word sweet. All right, we have that one done. Now my class, we'll go back to Google and we'll go back to, Ooh, I have a phone call. Hold on one second. All right, I'm back. So we're still looking for the font for my class. So we will go back to here, and we'll move this up to down to hearts, and we'll see what it says for that one. It's about the gist of what we've been getting here. That one's pretty close, but it's not a cursive. You know, honestly speaking, I don't like any of these. So back to 1001 free fonts. And we will change the word to hearts. And we will see what we got. I kind of like this lemon brush. That's kind of cool. It's a little close. Not really, but I mean, like I said, we have the freedom to do what we want with this job ourselves. Not exactly sure what category that would be under. Like a decorative font, maybe? No, not really. Outline font, maybe? See, these are more of like hard outline fonts. So I don't think we're going to find it in there. Might be a 3D font. Eh, not really. Not 
really a chalk one. These are all the distorted fonts. I don't know. I think we're going to go back to that lemon or whatever it was that was on that first page. Right there, lemon brush. So we will download it real quickly. And it's going to be a zip file. So there it is. Just double click it to install it. We will install it real quick. And it is called Lemon Brush. And we will go back to our document. And we will change this guy to Lemon Brush. And we'll change this guy to Lemon Brush. Okay, so now we have our fonts all done. It's full of, we're just going to use Arial Rounded. And that'll be close enough to that. Okay, so now that we have our text laid out, we are going to bring in some of the elements, like the hearts, and the dots and this banner. I downloaded a few copyright free images. I think one came from a catalog I had and one came from online from somewhere. And they were free for commercial use. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just bring in those elements. So we will go into import which is control I and we are going to look. I don't remember where I saved them. I'm pretty sure I saved them. They're probably in download still. Anyway, there are the hearts. So what we are going to do with the hearts are we are going to vectorize them. So we'll just do a quick bit map trace. And we lost a heart. So when something like this happens and you can't get all your images that are there, there's a couple things you want to try. First of all, you want to try to ungroup the entire document and get rid of this white background. And then you want to click somewhere around the middle here, and the heart is definitely gone. There's only one little part of it left. So what we'll do here is we will take this again, and rather than doing a quick trace, we're going to do an outline trace of it, and we're going to call it line art and see if it does any better of trace. It'll bring up this window here, which is allowing you to trace it. And when we're using the line art parameters, we have no luck either. So we'll switch it to the logo and see if it's any better. Nope, it's still gone. Detailed logo, still gone. Clip art, still gone. But that one definitely does look a little better. Low quality image, nope. And a high quality image, there we go. Now we've lost a little bit of the shadowing and all that, but we're okay with that. So we'll take that one instead, and it puts it right on top of it when you're done. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna ungroup the new document. You want to get rid of all the white around it. You want to clean up anything that's around it. Like right there is a little spot. Clean up any spots like right there. Is a, well, you don't want to get rid of that one because it's in the middle. But you just want to make sure that there's nothing that could be potentially harmful for it. Get rid of the middle of that one. Get rid of the middle of that. And then grab the heart and move it. See what's left. A little bit up here we don't want to keep. So we'll get rid of that. Get rid of that. This one looks pretty good. We'll move him out of the way. We'll move him out of the way. We'll make sure there's nothing else in this background that's gone. Okay. So now we have our three separate hearts here. We're going to group all this guy together. And then we're going to also group those together. So now we have our three hearts. What I do? Okay, there's obviously a bunch of stuff still up here. There we go. Now we'll move it up there and make sure we got it. 
move our three hearts out of the way a little more. Let's go over this again, make sure there's nothing up there, and it's all gone. So now we have our three hearts that we're going to use. And now we need our banner. So import, and I believe it's on my desktop. There it is, the banner. So there it is, just a regular like hand drawn type banner. We're going to trace it real quick to turn it into a vector image. Remember it always puts a vector right on top of it. So we can get rid of the original. And now the vector, we wanna ungroup them, which is control U, to get rid of all these little white backgrounds that are around everything. Okay, that one has a white, that one has a black background inside of it. And that's how it makes the line. It's actually created two separate images. It's this, which is the background, and this, which is the foreground. And what it does is it makes it look like it's a line as opposed to actually being a line. So what we'll do there is we put them on top of each other. You can do C and E. That'll combine them together and center them. If you didn't catch that again, you just can take both of them like this. together and boom you hit C and E and it puts them right on top of each other. And what we want to do here is we want to take this one right here which is combined that is going to turn it into one image. So now there is no more background. It all become just this one single image. So we have our banner in the way it's a little bit different but what we'll do is we'll just kind of turn it And it'll be pretty much close to the same. Now there's some random dots right here, which we're going to kind of incorporate somehow. I thought about just putting three little circles down, but this is kind of more of a hand-drawn type thing, especially with this heart right here. So I downloaded a series of dots, which are right there. And they're all different hand-drawn dots that are different sizes. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these dots right here, and we are going to do a quick trace on them. Oopsie, quick trace. And that is going to make just another dotted pattern right there. And there's our original. We'll take this, and we will ungroup it, and it'll get rid of all those extra things. We'll get rid of the white background. And now we randomly have dots, you know, like we'll use this one right here. We'll use this guy right here. And then we'll use this little guy right here. Three slightly different shapes, but it's still effectively the same thing. Then we will get rid of all the rest of the dots out of our document. Now we may want these to be a little bit more even in size. So maybe we'll make him a little bigger, and we'll definitely make him a little bigger. And now you're looking at these three dots, and they're looking more realistic like they have on the other document. Okay, so we will group these together, and that way we can just move them around as a unit the more we want them. Okay, so now it is time to go ahead and start actually assembling the document the way that they have it here. First of all, we move all of our components out of the way and we will bring them in how we need them. Okay, what we want is the entire document to be about 10 inches wide, 10 and a half inches wide. There are no small shirts in this order. They're all medium through 2x. Um, there are only a couple medium, so it's mostly large through 2x. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it a little bit bigger, about 10 and a half inches wide. It'll look a little big on the few medium shirts, but at the same time, it'll fit the two X's. Um, another way to do this is you can make it two separate size. You can make two separate screens for both sizes. You could do a bigger screen for the larger shirts, and you can do a smaller screen for the smaller shirts. But there's not really enough shirts in this order, especially the small ones, to justify making two screens. So now we have our wording in place. And we're going to kind of run it over how we want it. Okay, we know that the widest part of the document is definitely 
the word my class or our school. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight our school here. And we are going to make it a little bit bigger. What we also want to do is we also want to scrunch it a little closer to itself. Okay, so here we have the school font. We are going to want to make it a little bit closer together. Some of these letters, especially around here in the O's and all that, they're a little bit tight to each other, and I want to make the font big and bold. So one of the ways I can do that is by bringing the letters in closer together, and then I will be able to do that. So to do that, I want to bring up the text properties window. So what we'll do is we're going to go in the windows, we're going to go in the dockers, and we're going to go down here to text properties. That's going to bring this text property window over here. These are the ones we want to play with. These are the height of the letters. These are the spacing of the letters. This is the spacing of the paragraph. So what we want to do is we have the our school highlighted. And what we want to do is we're going to want to bring in these letters a little bit to each other. So all it's doing is bringing equally all the letters in by a percentage. Okay, we are good to do that just like that. About 15% I think is good. The other way we can do this is you can highlight the entire thing and you can break apart these by individual letters. So you highlight the word, you go under object, and you want to break apart the artistic text. What that does now is every letter or every word is now itself. So you can bring these a little closer together as words. If you want to take it even farther, you highlight the word itself and you go in to break it apart again and now every letter that's not connected is attached to each other. So if you want to say we want to bring this L just as L in a little bit to those O's, now we're looking pretty good. If we want to separate you know, these, we still have these. When you're done, though, you want to group them back together again. Okay. So now we have the word our school, nice, big, and bold. Get a little taller here. Condense it down a little bit. We want to make it down to 10 and a half inches wide. And if you look up here, this is your total width. Okay, so we're going to bring it there and we're going to bring it up a little bit until we hit 10 and a half inches wide. We are about there. Okay, one thing about shirts, especially dynamic shirts like this, is they can never be too big. They do look very lousy if they're too small. So, what we want to do is we want to make it as big and bold as possible. Okay, so we have the word my class there. Now we're going to have our little banner here, and we're going to put that underneath just like so. And it's going to be a little bit tall for what we want, so we're going to make it a little bit shorter. We're going to squish it down there a little bit. Oopsies. And what we want to do is we're going to straighten it out just a little bit, so it's not quite as dynamic. Okay. Then we're going to take our words, it's full of, and we're going to shrink this down, and we're just going to ca casually put it in there so it fits and looks good. It doesn't have to be perfect. We can certainly move this guy around a little bit so it looks a little straighter in there. And then we'll move our letters around a little bit. And we're looking pretty good. Now we want to group these two together because we always want these two guys to be together. And if we're going to do something like if we want to center all of them, you highlight them, you hit the C, and it centers it perfectly in the middle between everything. If you don't have this and you don't have everything grouped together, you have a tendency to have everything come together, this individual thing. Like take, for instance, if we ungroup these letters again, and now we have these individual letters, if I were to hit all these and center them again, now all the letters center on each other. That's why it's always important to group what you're working on when you're done working on it. Okay, so we have our school is full of, it's still a little bit tall in my opinion, so we're going to make it a little bit shorter. Then we're going to put in our series of dots here, just like the other one had. And we're going to copy our dots and bring them over here. Now, there's two ways we can flip these. 
There's either the flip buttons up here, which just simply flips it around, or you can actually physically make it 180 degrees and turn it around. Now we're already looking a little big here again. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring out our school just a little bit. Okay. And we're going to center this, we're going to combine this line together so we can center these all together. Okay. Now, if you look, this line is now 12.232 inches. We're going to need to make this a little bit smaller so it gets down to our 10 and a half inch limit. And there we go. So our school now is a little big, so we're going to make that a little bit smaller so it kind of fits more like the example. So now we have our school is full of, and then we need sweethearts. So we go down to our word sweet, and we grab it and bring it up. Now if you look, it's kind of right there, and it's kind of right there. All right. So we're going to make it a little bit shorter. And then we have our three random hearts. So we're going to make these a little bit smaller so they kind of fit. And then we'll grab them one at a time and we'll just throw them in there and see how they look. Let me make that guy a little wider because he looks a little stupid like that. There we go. That's looking pretty good in my opinion. Maybe you can turn one. To turn it, you kind of double click it and then just rotate a little bit. Yeah, looking good. And then we need our word hearts, which are down here again. And we will kind of bring that off to the right. So as you will notice, we have kind of extended out past of our limits. We know that these dots are the 10 and a half inches wide that we want for the document. And we know that these hearts are now past it. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of move this whole line over a little bit so we're underneath that limit. And then we're going to bring up our hearts here. And we're going to do the same thing. Now we're going to take our three hearts again right here that we just had. And we're going to copy them and paste them on top of each other. And then we're going to kind of just bring them over here Maybe we'll flip them around so it doesn't look like we're changing the same thing. And then maybe we'll switch the order of the hearts a little bit. We'll put this guy up here a little bit. We'll put this guy over here, and then we'll put this guy on the bottom. It doesn't look totally like we scammed it. People can tell that we did it completely different. So there is our, we'll get rid of our school so we can compare apples to apples here. There is ours compared to the original. Not too shabby. In my opinion, our school looks a little small, like smashed together. So we're going to bring out our school and make it as big as these. There we go. I think it looks a little bit better. Our school is full of sweethearts. One of the important things to do at this point is to make sure everything is spelled correctly because there's nothing worse than printing out an entire job and having it not be spelled correctly. So our school is full of sweethearts. Looks pretty good. So we can take our, our school is full of sweethearts. We're going to make this a little bit bigger like that, just to fill it in a little bit. And we're going to ungroup these, because we want is full of to be a font again. Oopsies. We have to ungroup it again because that was its own group as well. And then is full of, we'll make a font that is more in tune with what we want. A little bit distressed and things like that maybe. Just to make it fit in there a little bit better. I'm not exactly fond of that. So we have all kinds of fonts we can play with. Kind of looking for a... There we go. A little bit bolder of a font that's a little more fun, maybe. If you ever run into this, I have snapping on, so it's kind of like hard to get it where I want it. If you ever run into that, just make it really big. 
and then you can play around with it again. So there we go. Our school is full of sweethearts. So from there, we'll just get rid of our original. And we will center our little guys here. We'll group it all together so it doesn't get moved. And if you look, it's 10.6 by 10.8. It's a pretty good size for a t-shirt. And we will save it. And we'll just call it uh, school hearts. And now we're good to go. So I hope you enjoyed the video about creating a simple design using words and clip art in Corel Draw. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I'll get back to everybody that I can. Otherwise, if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. This is Rob from Be Promoted. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.